It's hard to believe that the Nissan GTR came out in 2008 and it's still in production today. So what we're going to do in this video is have a look at the 2024 model, the Nissan GTR. We have the premium, we have the T-Spec and we have the Nismo and see if it's actually worth $200,000. And I think it is. And I'm going to let you know why in this in this video when we have a look at the design and also talk about some of the spec and text. So let's have a look at this official uh, Nissan GTR press kit for the 2024. 24 model and let's see what's actually new and how it's supposed to validate the price of two hundred thousand dollars so we have a redesigned front and rear fascias their new rear wing design enhanced gtr's aerodynamic performance and appearance the t-spec returns joining gtr premium and the nismo models and we also have new exclusive paint colors like the millennium jade and the midnight purple which i love looks super cool the 2024 gtr is offered in three grades which talked about the gtr premium the t-spec with 565 horsepower and then of course on top of that you have the 600 horsepower gtr nismo from the twin turbo uh 3.8 liter v6 so they really wanted to keep the same drag coefficient as the original so engineers closely scrutinized the mesh used in the front grill and <laughs> employed a thinner mesh to further enhance cooling and reduce drag so that's the level of detail they went into to reduce uh, weight and keep the drag coefficient unchanged at 0.26 cd and and then you have the almost 10% larger surface area of the rear wing of the uh, Nismo version, which also has been specifically designed to optimize drag and downforce. GTR Nismo carbon fiber brakes is what you get. You get gold painted version of the Nismo's race 20 inch forged wheels and Nismo tuned vehicle dynamic control and wider fenders. So they're really updating a lot of the tech underneath not just the new shell of the GTR they're also updating a lot of the tech underneath uh, underneath the body but you still have the same uh, six-speed dual clutch automatic in the 2024 model and you have three driver selectable settings for the GTR suspension you have normal comfort and R on the inside, you have an infotainment system that's 8 inches multi-touch display featuring Apple CarPlay. The display also has GTR-specific customizable data pages showing you key vehicle data, including details like the coolant and the oil temperature, the transmission gear, selection G-forces, turbocharged boost, and even a stopwatch for when you want to go on the track. And for the first time ever, the GTR Nismo comes with a limited slip differential in the front. And this helps improve the driving experience, ensuring that the GTR faithfully follows the driver's inputs. The pricing for this though, so we have the uh, premium starting at $117,000, then you have T-Spec $145,000, and going up to the Nismo, which is above $200,000, which is just crazy to think about because this is a 16 year old nissan but i actually think it's worth it and i'm gonna let you know why right now when we jump in to photoshop so let's have a look at the first generation of the nissan gtr and then compare it to the 2024 and let's see what's changed in the design the weird thing when i look at these two cars if i were to put for example if i were to take these headlights of the 2024 model down here and apply them on to the headlights of the 2008 i don't know which one looks more modern to be honest because this 2008 model feels like it has less styling features in it and I feel that's the uh, that's the trend that we're heading towards now to reduce the uh, complex surfacing that we have in cars and focus on key graphic elements to have the identity of, of the brands and here it feels like the new 2024 got a lot more styling in the front end and the biggest change here is that we have a proper bumper now integrated across the entire front end regulation says that you need to have a bumper Bumper that goes from one end to the other. We need to have a, stru a structural piece behind the, uh, the the shell of the car that goes from one point, so right here, all the way to the other side. And you can see that we have that in here as well. It's just hiding behind this black plastic or whatever is in the, in the in the front end of the 2008 model. But in the new one, they actually decided to just have the body itself be part of the bumper, which I think looks pretty good. But it 
also reduces the GTR-ness of the front end because we're so used to having this mouth of the GTR that this almost looks like a brand new model from this. And if we just zoom in on this detail, it's very hard to say that this is from coming from a GTR. But overall, I, I love the new line flow that we have in the new GTR. We still have the mouth. It just cuts through the bumper right here, continues down at the bottom, and then of course goes up on the other side. And we have these new uh, fog lights. I believe these are fog lights or position lights down here. Very modern styling to this piece. Hexagonal uh, shape around it and these pixelated details, lights inside of it, which feels like also a new trend that we have. A lot of pixelated lights coming back. I think uh, manufacturers started to think, okay, we used light bars for a long time now, LED bars, different thicknesses and curvatures. What can we do differently moving forward? And I think that's going to be more of these pixelated lights, not just in the Hyundai's, but also in other manufacturers. I also love this color. Overall, I think the GTR is still a modern looking car. It definitely looks like a 2023 model. So let's have a look at the Nismo model from a side view. This is the 2015 up top, and then you have the 2024 down here at the bottom. So what's different here. The first thing you notice, at least what I notice, is that the wing is completely changed. As I said, the surface area of this wing in the 2024 is about 10% larger than the previous uh, 2015 Nismo. And you also have these angles of the uh, mounting points of the wing tilting forward, which I think gives it a pretty unique look. But looking at the side view of a GTR, I mean, this is unmistakably a GTR when you see these, uh, these lines. We have this line being intact of course all the bodywork is still the same as the very earliest uh, GTRs and I think it still works today it's not a necessarily beautiful looking car but it is a very purposeful looking design with these lines that we have going all, all over the car and one detail that I love about G the GTR from the very beginning is the roof line so it has this almost Koenigsegg style um, curvature up here and the wraparound visor uh, design of the greenhouse also feels a little bit like Koenigsegg even though we do have have a solid A pillar right here, but it's blacked out. So it kind of makes for this visor design in the front end and a sharp corner up here, which is also very typical for the GTR and also the Nissan 370Z, for example. I don't know about you. Let me know what you think about this design. Do you think it still works in 2023? I think with the updated uh, front bumper now and the, the updated LEDs in the front and rear end, it, it, looks, it still looks really good. It looks like I don't understand why they would need to replace this just yet because it still feels like a very modern design. So let's have a look at the rear view. And this is the T-Spec that you're looking at down here in the at the bottom, the 2024 T-Spec. And this is the very first GTR from 2008 up top. Again, if we were to put these new LEDs, this is a one single LED light going around these circles instead of having these dots that we have in the old 2008. If we were to put these taillights into the 2008, this would still look like a very modern design just because of the simple surfacing that we have that kind of suits today's uh, generation of cars, maybe even more than the, the new 2024 because it got a lot more complex here. Even though I love the styling of the new 2024 GTR, Still, it doesn't look beautiful from any angle, in my opinion. It's just a cool and purposeful looking design. And I love what, what they did in this section of the new one. Have a look at this beautiful st treatment of this surface. We have a nice chamfer at the side here. And then we have a dip in the surface and going in and creating this soft radius down here with a, an almost sharp line housing the top part of the graphics while everything underneath it has a lot of smooth surfacing in addition to beautiful chamfers that houses the graphics in the rear. You can see another chamfer down here. I just, as, as I said before, I think adding chamfers around key graphic details like this, it just makes for a more premium looking design. And it's such a small change to make. Overall, the lower part, the diffuser section of the new 2024 GTR is way more complicated and complex than we have in the 2008, which both of these look good. Yes, we have more stuff going on down here, but it also kind of suits the GTR to be this aggressive in its styling. This maybe looks a little too weak for the GTR while they added some aggressiveness in the 2024 model. Last but not least, let's have a look at these interiors. I think this 
If you want to keep a car in production for 16 years, specifically a specific, a special model like this, a GTR, you, I think that where you should focus the most effort into upgrading it is definitely going to be in the interior. And honestly, looking at these two interiors, the old one, the 2008, it definitely looks like it comes from 2008. There's a lot of details and styling features and design uh, philosophies in the 2008 model that really dates this car. But looking at the new one, the 2024, it really has everything that I need in a car. And one thing that I think maybe a lot of people thought that we're gonna upgrade is turning this gauge cluster into a completely digital one. But looking at the new one, I think I, I actually prefer what they did here. They just have a big analog rev counter in the middle and all everything else is analog except for the uh, gear selector here and that's the only display that I can see in the screen and I personally don't mind that at all it feels like an old analog gauge cluster but underneath all the technology updates that they've made since 2008 makes it into a 2023 model so in my opinion this is almost the best combination of a sports car today to have very analog gauge clusters with upgraded technology and the styling here is completely different from the 2008 model which had this console in the middle now we have some nice line flow in the leather wrapping around the center console right here we have a brand new designs of the air outlets in the old one it sat as a round outlet up here but now we have them down here right next to the radio we still have this circular outlet on the on the right side of the driver which is interesting but everything else in the interior has been upgraded look at the steering wheel look at this design of the 2008 this definitely looks aged and if, if they were to still have this steering wheel in production today it would not work out specifically not with the new uh, exterior but of course they updated the the steering wheel as well and we have some nice styling in the centerpiece before it was just a round piece in the middle now we have some stitching in here we have its three spoke with a premium feel on specifically this spoke down here and of course the carbon fiber bucket seats in the Nismo version overall I think as I said this is probably the best combination of a of a new sports car and the reason why I think it's worth two hundred thousand dollars for the GTR Nismo is because I think people actually want some of these old features specifically when we're talking about the gauge clusters in a new car they don't really care about having a 32 inch widescreen dashboard but instead they want to focus on what really matters in a sports car and that is specifically for the gtr it's about how you feel when you're driving the car